Yo, what's up, family? I'm be there in a, few, in a couple of minutes. Let me know how I sound. Let me know how I sound. How's the, how's everything? How's everything sounding out there? Let me know. Let me know. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, I see the team rolling in. What's going on, Kevin? Brandon, what's up, baby? Ulysses, what's up, baby? Karen, Miss Ivy, what's going down? What's happening? Darius, what's going on, baby? Daryl in the house. Detroit represents. Coming at you, baby. Big things, baby. Big things. Happy 420. Let's roll it.
man. Real G's rolling in. Mr. Nigel Schroeder, what's up, baby? Good to see you. Looks like YouTube is central tonight. What's up? You know what time it is. What's going down, everybody? We in the house tonight. You know who it is. B.O.B. Nothing but the best of the best. This is Cakeology, the science of success. If this is your first time on the stream, if this is your first time checking out the channel, what have you, make sure you guys like the stream on the way in and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. You know what we do. We talk about that NBC, baby. Money, business, and credit. It's going to be a live one tonight because i've got a very very special guest in the house i'm gonna bring him on right now mr paul kirch from ceo crossing what's up baby hey bobby what's going on what's going on man everything is lovely everything is lovely it's a beautiful tuesday night you know what it is it's 420 baby you know what i mean so whatever it is put it in the chat what's going down what's going down let, let let it be known what's going down it's 420 they getting it out here baby so are we um i want to uh uh i want to start off by just thanking everybody once again for being a part of the stream uh, i want to thank paul especially for joining the stream tonight we're going to be talking about what it is to really build that business credit and what services are out there for us um you guys don't know but i'm gonna tell you paul is a member the founder of ceo crossings okay so that's why i have brought paul on today is to really help us try to get an understanding of how we're gonna grow our business how we're gonna get that business credit how we're gonna get that funding you know and what it is that paul exactly does and how long he's been doing it what's going on paul well, talk to me baby where you where where you at anyway right now where you at where are you coming in from Fort Worth, Texas. Now you asked what I do. I mean, uh, some days I don't even know, Bobby, but I'm going to try and figure that out. Tonight. <laughs> so. Hey, as long as, as long as we continue to try to figure it out, I think we'll be all right. I definitely think we're going to be okay. Tell me, so well, tell, got, me, a little, got, tell me a little bit about, uh, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. What was that? We got two young kids. So every day's a guess, right? So, uh, it's all good. But, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, tell me a little bit about CEO crossings. How did you get involved in this space? Uh, yeah. and, and a little bit about yourself and your background, like what, what's going down with you, with you, Paul? Yeah, I appreciate that, man. It's like, so I spent, uh, 26 years in corporate America before I had the, uh, courage to go out and start my own business. And I say courage because I, I, did, I just didn't really come from that background. I didn't feel like I was worthy of starting my own business. I didn't feel like I had all the knowledge, even though I had a very successful career during those 26 years. And so when I did start my own company, I was like, man, this is so liberating. I felt like I burned the boats and stormed the beaches and had no exit strategy. So I was all in. And uh, I was very fortunate enough to start uh, a live radio show. I got mm. invited to be part a radio show and so I had a show called Boss Academy Radio and I did live radio for about a year before I decided to move to podcasting. Mm. I built that up to a top 10 business podcast show. 
Okay. And so, where, so where, what company did you start out with when you were when you were corporate America? Because a lot, you yeah. know, there's a lot of, of of viewers out here still that are in corporate America. You know, and we talked yeah. about this last time a little bit, how to fire, you know, uh, uh, you fire your boss with a credit card. You know what I mean? So, exactly. you know, there there is, you know, some truth to that. And, uh, you know, we can we can also talk more about that. But but tell me a little bit about like, so, 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 so where did you grow up? Where, where did you grow up first? Yeah, I grew up, I grew up in Nebraska in a really small town. When I say small, I mean, 365 people. Wow. So entrepreneurship was was not even a thought there. It's like if somebody did own a small business, they were struggling. Mm -hmm. My parents mm -hmm. had a, my dad was a school teacher, but we had a summer business. We had a vegetable farm, and it's like I uh, I always said it's like you know my mom would keep the uh, money we collected from sales in a coffee can, and we'd go to the grocery, we'd go to the bank when we had enough money. Wow. To fill that. So you that so you grew up, you grew up in a small town in Nebraska. Yeah, man. Wow, that is that that's cool. You know, I've I you know I've, I'm I've always lived in the big city, but I'm I'm really like a small town, you know, a small town uh, a guy by by the by the heart. You know what I mean? So 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 you grew up. You you know your your mom. Uh, you, you said your dad was a teacher, right? Yeah, we had that summer business, and uh, like I said, they would go to the bank when they had enough money to fill that can. We didn't make a lot of trips to the bank. It was it was not the best example of mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, man. So so. I had an uncle that really influenced me. He was a very successful business owner and he's somebody that I really aspired to be. And so uh, throughout my career, it's like I was kind of torn. If you've ever read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by yeah. uh, Robert Kiyosaki, yep. man, I was in that world. I, I had the dad who said, you know, stay in school, get a good mm. job and build your life. And then I had an uncle that was like, take risks, go out, uh, leverage yourself and and follow your dreams and so so, so like you I've, really you really did grow up with the with the rich dad poor dad in in your life kind of yeah. like you know kind of like you know the book where it was yeah. the same situation robert kiyosaki's dad was the one that he considered the poor dad and his yeah. friends his friend's father his best friend's father was his rich dad absolutely and so you asked where i worked so i was going to school at the university of nebraska and uh gallup had a, the gallup organization had a call center there on campus Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine said, man, you got to come check this out. There's good looking girls. Uh, we'll oh, yeah. The girls money. will always get you to do some stuff. Unfortunately, that's true. Mm -hmm. But I went, uh, I did phone surveys for two years. Like, I mean, I just faced rejection after rejection, which is probably why I've rejection always. Rejection by uh, the girls or by, by, the, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the people? Oh, by the people. You call oh, people the, at the home. The girls was there. on? The girls were on? Well, I. If I did face rejection, I was already, I was trained, man. I was ready to deal with it. <laughs> so, I learned it was about at-bats back then. But I no, I worked at college for uh, 10 years. And uh, I was in operations most of that time. But then I wanted to move into sales because I thought sales was the closest to being an entrepreneur without taking that risk. So I thought, man, I can still have that W-2, but I can be this sales guy who's kind of got his own thing going on. So I did sales for the next uh, 16 years and really had a very blessed career, but I was never fulfilled. You know, I always wanted more. Mm -hmm. and so, so you did, you did, you did sales. You said, you said you did, you did sales for 16 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you were, you were in it in corporate America for 16 years in uh, you know, how many years altogether? 26 total. Wow, 26 total. So you, you know, let me let me say this now. I I haven't been in corporate America that long, but I was in it for a minute, okay? And you know, yes, entrepreneurship is what our our mantra is is what we is what we want to be, what we are, what we always will be. But having said that, any situation that you're in, you can use that to get where you need to be. So, so that stepping stone, you know, and that, it, it, because when I was in corporate America for a minute, I took all of their training. I was like the first, I was like the model student. You know what I mean? I was the model student. I was the best of the best in everything. Okay. So it, it, I don't know if you guys know, but I was in, um, uh, I was in, I was in the car game, car dealership. You know what I mean? Work for a big car dealership started off in sales. You know, a lot of people don't know this. I'm sharing this first time really in live stream. 
you know, was in sales, but I used all that. So, I mean, it, it, what did you learn from corporate America, Paul? Like when you were in there for the 26 years, you know, it, what would you tell people that are in corporate America that want to be entrepreneurs, but you know, are in it still? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I really learned everything that I needed to be successful. So when I went out on my own and started my first company, I started a sales coaching and training business because I had just come out of a sales management role. I led an international sales team. We had a lot of success. I positioned the company I was working for uh, to be able to sell. The owner was able to sell the company. There you go. Really, there you go. And it's why I learned because he sold yeah. and I didn't like the new ownership. And uh -huh. so but everything I learned at that point, I took and started my own business from it. So. And, and and that's ex that's that's exactly what like it, the the beauty of if you're in corporate America there's there's a lot to be learned okay there's a lot to be observed and I'll say, and I'll say this if if you're not if you're not uh, the best of the best when it comes to being a soldier you can't be a general. OK, it, 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 to me, a true general has been through the mud, has been through the trenches, has been through the boot camp and was the star of all that. People see people see Paul, people think yeah, yo, they just going to just going to come on the screen scene and just be the general. You know what? what what's up? Hell, Razor? I know you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, we got the We got the general in the house right now. So, I mean, that, that, that right there, that mentality, Paul, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. It's true. And, you know, look, Bobby, I mean, back when I started my own company, it was not as kosher as it is today. Today, it's like, it's sexy, right? It's so easy to right. start your own business, the internet the way it is. But when I started mine, it's like all my friends thought I was crazy and all my family thought I was even crazier. And mm. uh, you know, I have people... I, I still to this day, I have a couple of friends who, whenever they talk to me, they go, man, I could never do what you do. Mm. And it's like, uh, you, what, struggle? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It, Harder, it, it, work, make less. No, I'm teasing, but, you know, listen, there listen. were times where clean. Listen, every, in every single aspect of life, it's a struggle, okay? Absolutely. It, it just depends on what set of problems you want, okay? I'll yeah. take the set of problems that come with the bread, with the cake. Okay. Yeah. You know what I discovered, Bobby, is, is, uh, as much as I had experience in selling and I had experience in doing everything I was doing when I started my company, I didn't know about the other stuff. I didn't know about the administrative stuff. I didn't know about the business credit, which we're going to talk about. Yeah. I didn't know any of that. So I was really like, I found myself going, man, I got to sell and do all that too. It's like, it was, it was a, it's a lot of hats. It was a time. Yeah. It is a lot of hats to wear. I, I want to take a pause for just one second. I want to say what's going on to the chat. What's going on? All the real G's, all the real players in the house tonight. We got all kinds of celebrities in the house. We got Brandon. Hey, look, Brandon got a Jersey, his Jersey up there. Number one, number one. I feel you, baby. Who else we got? My main man, Ulysses Hill, in the house. Man, we're doing wonderful, special guests. You know it. Paul Kurt, CEO Crossing. We're about to teach how to be a real CEO. Not the kind where you put... Remember you had the, remember you had those guys, Paul, with the varsity jackets that used to just uh, get, go to the corner store and just embroider CEO on their black jacket and think that that was oh, yeah. it? Well, I, and that's like the, <laughs> yeah, you get those business cards that put it up and say president and it used to matter. Now it's like, if you get handed a business card that says president CEO, it's like, you gotta go, well, well president I, of I don't, I don't put that on my cards at all. I, all I, you yeah. know what I got on my card on one of my cards, I have intergalactics field strip field trip coordinator. That's what I have on one <laughs> of the cards. And, and then the other one, I just have, you know, manager, you know, that's it. Yeah, it's perfect. The general in the yeah. house, Hellraiser. Make sure you guys check out the Hellraiser on YouTube. Man, my man, you know, it, the type of stuff that he's doing, like, you guys, it's next level, okay? As far as really building business trust, understanding privacy, 
uh, and and just making moves on on just a whole nother level. I I don't even know what to say. I, Hellraiser, what do you put on your business card? Because if if you got me at a loss for words, I don't know what anybody else would do. This is my comedic interlude. You know, let me applause myself. For that. Um, Darius Franklin in the house. What's going on, baby? Let's go, baby. Bob, nothing but the best. You know it. You you already know. I already know. Daryl in the house. Detroit, baby. What's going on? We got my main man, Nigel Schroeder, in the house. Listen, you guys got to check out Nigel's channel. Uh, it, he is also a very, very talented, very smart individual with a lot of great content on YouTube. Make sure you guys check him out for sure. Jazzy, what's going on? You, you know what's up. You know what up, dope. You know what up, dope. You know, Finkel, Seven Mile, East Side, West Side, Southwest. You know what's up. Downtown when it's time, you know. You know what's up. So, so let me, let's get back, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it a little bit, Paul. And, and by the way, by the way, this stream is interactive. I, I know, I, I, you know, that me and Paul are very entertaining. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't charge you what it's worth right now. You know, a couple hundred at least we'll get to that. So the least that can happen is some participation. If you guys have any questions about anything that's related to business credit, anything that's related to business management for Paul in his program, what he does, put it in the comments. That's what we're here for. You got million dollar, you got million dollar men up here talking for free on YouTube. If you don't take advantage of this, you might as well just go sit back on the couch and go to sleep, dude. Let me applaud you know, myself. Okay. Let me applaud yeah. myself for that first. Yes, sorry. Go ahead, Paul. What were you saying? No, I'm just saying? That's a really great point. I mean, you know, we people hear these conversations and they often take it to grant for granted because there's so much information out there. But you know, that's why we started the CEO Crossing. We've got this amazing community that's it's uh, a network of people that are like minded. We learn from each other. We grow. We give. We also receive. And that's what it's about. And people often take information for granted today because it's so readily available. But when absolutely. you got to trust, it, it, absolutely, you it know, it, it, it's, it's information overload right now. And I don't blame them, Paul. But I, listen, I, I, but listen, like when I, for me, I, t I take it all in. I'm like a sponge. My nickname is SpongeBob. Before there was SpongeBob, you understand? We've been soaking up stuff for a long time. And what I soak up is data. You know, we want data, we want knowledge, you know, and there's so many opportunities out here right now that, yeah, it does get cluttered, but you better recognize too, you know, you better recognize we, this, this ain't clout, baby. We've been famous. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. lives are changed by just one idea that can help you transform your business. And that's like, when I met you, uh, one of the first things I really started analyzing it's like well how much do i really know about business credit and i i feel like i've done a pretty good job of establishing business credit but man it's like i started going through your videos i was like whoa uh bob has some answers and uh no, it was sure. really frustrating. it was good to know that i was doing some of the things right but there's also things that i was missing I appreciate. It. Well, you, you know, uh, um, before I get back to your story, I, I just got to shout out my main man in the house. Points blank travel. The the man is, the man has a YouTube channel, okay, with so much great information, so much effort put into the channel. Let's roll, baby. Check out his channel. Make sure to subscribe and like to my main man PBT in the heezy. All right, so we were we, so so the last we left Paul, he was 26 years in on a on a corporate gig, built up the company that he worked with so that so 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 the owner could sell it for billions. You know. I put that in there. Well. I don't know for effect, you know, don't quote me on it. I'm not a financial yeah, advisor, dude. Yeah. And I've, I've done no research. Okay. So, um, uh, so at this time, how many girls were you getting? Let's get, you know, how, how, what, how many girls were you, how many girls were you getting? Were you had a lot of girls or what? Um, what kind of car did you, was it important? 
Well, at the time, so I learned a really valuable lesson. So at the time I was married and my wife was eight months pregnant when I quit and started my own company. Oh, okay. In, in one of the, the worst economic downturns this country's ever seen. So a lot of my friends really thought I was crazy. But what I didn't realize at the time was it was kind of a blessing because I was in doing sales coaching and consulting. And because the economy was kind of in the tank at the time, everybody mm. needed sales. So my phone was ringing off the hook when I first started. So were you st- were you still in Nebraska at the time? So I mean, no, no, no. Okay. no I was at the time. I was living in Texas. Okay, I, Texas. I, I lived on the West Coast out in California for several years, but I moved here from mm. Seattle actually. So I moved oh, wow. to Seattle. Okay. The- so, so how what was it? So how so what so you 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 came from the 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 the, the hustle and bustle of of corporate life. What made you want to start your own business? And what business did you start in the beginning? Yeah, so I I wanted to since the time I was in high school, but I just really didn't feel like I knew what I was doing. Uh, So my first business was doing sales coaching and consulting. So I was basically kind of serving the role of a fractional sales manager, but I was also teaching people how to do sales and and, uh, actually contract with a very sizable sales coaching organization was uh, hosting their uh, programs for Fortune 500 companies. So I had a lot of really good things happening. I was learning and growing as I went, but it was all uh, around sales and sales consulting. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you had, you had 26 years of sales experience. So, I mean, and, and that's one of the things that I think is so important is that, you know, people ask me, well, what business should I start? Well, what have you been doing? Yeah. What have you been yeah. doing? Whatever you've been doing is a business dude. You know and I, mean? I know a lot of- a lot of people may not like hearing this, Bob, but it's like when people say, I want to follow my passion. Well, let me tell you, I used to play competitive pool and I was a very good pool player. I traveled around the country, played in college national championships. I was very serious about it. A pool, wait, hold, thought, on, hold on, hold on. Let me rewind. You, you said you were a professional pool player? I didn't play professional, but I played, I traveled around. I played a lot of Vegas tournaments and wow. played national championships. Dang. And I, I was passionate about the game, and I thought, man, I need to go work in this industry. So I took a job during college working for a uh, billiard wholesaler. Mm -hmm. It was like working at Pizza Hut and going home and eating pizza. My passion died so quick, I quit playing. Mm -hmm. I quit playing for 18 years because I really had lost my passion. So if you say, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go follow my passion, be careful. Right. You better have something bigger driving you. A why. Why are you doing it? That's what matters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, listen, it's cool to follow your passion, but sometimes you also got to look out and see what you got to also follow the money a little bit. You know, you got to, yeah, you have to create a business for yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And have a reason. What's going on, manager, manager, manager. What's going on, manager? Calling out all managers. What's going down? What's going down, Candid? Daryl Farmer in the house. What up, though, baby? You know we getting it. You know we getting it. I'm sorry, did I interrupt? Or let me give you applause since I interrupted. No, you're good. All right, there we go. I was just saying, you got to have something that drives you, man. There better be a why behind your, what you're doing. And money, and, I, and I, the one caveat I'll say, chase the money to a point. But money, if money isn't coming in and that's your big why, you're not going to be motivated to keep going. You got to have something bigger. You know, you got to have something that drives you and wakes you up, even if the money isn't there. That's true. If you're chasing money and ain't there, good luck. That's true. Absolutely. You know, it's a, fun, it's, it's a, it's like, it's a dance. It is. You know, it's a dance. Just, just like a lot of things in life are a dance. You know, to 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 do something that you love, but you know that you can make a business out of, and 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 uh, uh, and, and, and build a life for yourself. You know. Yeah. And T. T. I hope- Lloyd Productions in the house. What up, though? My main man in the house. We got all the real G's. Darius Franklin in the house. Oh, we got the other co-founder, Eric Bell, in the house. The big dog. The big dog, CEO of Crossings, Eric Bell. Welcome. I appreciate you, baby. You know, 
And Bob, we're talking about uh, going out and starting your own business. I hope it doesn't come easy for people too. And I say that because if it comes easy, when things do get hard, that's when people give up. But Absolutely. if they have to grind and have to, to earn it, man, they mm -hmm. stay hungry. Because I've been through ups and downs, and when it's down, I always have something that keeps me going. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's so important. It's so important once again to have that balance. So, so, so tell me, so, so, so now explain to me now, now you, now you're an entrepreneur. Okay. Yep. So how did, how did CEO crossings come about and what exactly yeah. is CEO crossings and how can, you know, what are you doing out here? Uh, you know, to take us to the next level. Cause the, you know, that's what I want. You know, I'm not yeah, gonna sure. I'm not gonna settle for anything other than th th than ten figures. Okay, simple as that. If I don't have ten figures, and, and listen, everybody has their own goal. Okay, but if I don't have ten figures, it was a complete failure. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Boss Academy Radio was uh, was a podcast show that I had started. I was on live radio for a while, and then I built the top ten business podcast show, but. It, I got divorced from that woman that I was married to, I mentioned, and mm -hmm. it was a painful divorce. And it's like, I had to make some decisions. I became a single father overnight yes. and I was running my own business. And who so I who said, who or was it too soon? Uh, no, no, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. A longer conversation. Yeah. Never but, mind. Never mind. Never mind. I, I just thought about that question. Sometimes it I was go a, crazy. Let's just say it wasn't a healthy marriage. Okay. And so, but when I left, well, I had to make single, some, you single free to mingle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when I uh, put that show on hold because I was trying to uh, get my business, keep my business floating, mm -hmm. I uh, Eric approached me and says, "Hey, man, I got this thing, CEO Crossing, I'm building." And so I said, "Okay, well, look, I, I had success with Boss Academy Radio. I was doing this show that was about tips, tools, tricks, and strategies to help you grow your business." Mm -hmm. I said, "I want to bring that to CEO Crossing," and I said, "I've mm -hmm. had success as part of mastermind groups." Or I'll network and learn from others. And it's like, I want to bring that to CEO Crossing. He says, great, let's do it. So we've been building out this platform that's a platform of like-minded professionals. You know, you don't have to be a CEO to be a part of CEO Crossing. In fact, most of our most of our clients are $5 million and less in revenue. They're smaller. Mm -hmm. CEO is more of a, it's more of a concept than a title. And it's about that idea of you're in charge. You're the one building your business, but you don't have to go it alone because it's hard sometimes. So where that's cool, important, man. we bring coaching, we bring amazing uh, thought leaders, we bring people that are there willing to share their ups and downs and, and learn from each other. So Absolutely. It's, it's, it's been a blessing, man. It's like, it's like a family. You know, Absolutely. I hear you talking about all these people you know, and that's what we have. We have this place where we, we know each other, we trust each other, and it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. So I got the website up on the uh, screen right now. Um, if you guys want to find out uh, how to um, take advantage of what CEO Crossing has to offer, I did leave the link uh, in the description of the video. It's CEOcrossings.com. Okay. And you can also book a call directly with Paul. And he's got the best place to book it, which is uh, book a call with Paul.com. It's bookwithpaul.com. Yeah, book, yeah, you know what I mean. Bookwithpaul.com. Bookwithpaul.com coming at you. So he's got a great um great thing going on um with that as well. So an entrepreneur, okay, and I'm I'm gonna take myself. I'm gonna take myself first. Um an entrepreneur like myself that has a business, um but wants to build that team around them to really scale the business. Is that something that you guys can help with? Yeah, absolutely, man. It's like part of the, what we do is we, I think a lot of people are, they're not lacking resources. They're lacking resourcefulness. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when you're part of our community, you're surrounded by people that are extremely resourceful. And we not only can show you a better way, we can introduce you to the right people. And uh, mm. I mean, I've got a friend who runs a VA business, a virtual assistant business, and he's oh, yeah. all day long helps people build their teams without having to add another W two wage earner. That's what they're yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. The minute you start adding employees, mm -hmm. the game changes. If you oh, can yeah. do it with ten nine, it's 
sometimes it's easier I, and, and that's what i tell people all the time paul like it this is the best time in the world to build a business okay i know that it's tough out here and i know there's a pandemic no one wanted this but um you know we st we have to still pivot we still have to live our lives so yeah. taking into into account the circumstances listen right now nothing is open no one's coming to your office to look at it no one's coming to your store to see how you know how it's well stocked it is listen it's online okay everything's on if you have a website just like everybody else has a website you in the game you're in the game you're in business okay and like paul was saying the whole vir the whole virtual assistant you, that's a that's a that's a great business to be in right now be because just like you said no one wants to add a w2 one but we all need to build a team and we need some help absolutely man and, and you know what if business is slow learn something yeah you know get Find it. Find some avenues to transform your business or transform your life. And I'll tell you what, one of the things I did when COVID hit was, I, like everybody, I went on lockdown. All my clients were scared, and so they went into preservation mode. And so what did I do? I started working on my mindset. I started working on mm -hmm. uh, getting back into coaching and, and doing things that I right. had lapsed. Educating, investing in yourself. Absolutely, man. So don't make excuses. Uh, I pandemic man this is the best time to be an entrepreneur because oh you my can goodness. not only did the government give a lot of people money to support them but it's also a time when you can really embrace learning something new and oh, it, it is it's it's an incredible time you know uh you can get, get to a virtual office wake wake up go into the next room which is not your office your other bedroom and mm -hmm. get down get busy absolutely you can go from your day t pajamas to your night pajamas and then back to your day pajamas and just Absolutely. never leave the house. Absolutely. You know, now, that. I mean, that's, one of the things, that's one of the things being with Eric has been a blessing because Eric is a lifetime student, man. He always, mm. he always, he always says he's kind of like the uh, mad scientist. You know, you give him something, he'll figure out a way to do it. And mm. one thing that's really cool about watching him work is he'll take an idea and try and figure out how to do it. He'll go out and learn it. Absolutely. And he doesn't make excuses. That's beautiful. Because sometimes when you don't have the resources to outsource, so you don't have the resources to hire staff, you got to do it yourself. Yeah, so you, you got to do yeah, it. Yeah. And, and, and I tell you what, even if you do have the resources, you got to at least know that your resources are being used in the right direction. If you don't know what's going on, you don't even know your business, you haven't gone into the, the nitty gritty details of it, you don't know what. Everybody might be going crazy out here. With the money. Like Hellraiser's Hell Raiser. Hell quote there, man. It's like we learn from the best and from the mud. I mean, absolutely. That's the, you got to get dirty. Absolutely. Hell ra Hell Raiser straight out the mud, baby, with it. Oh, Jazzy. Oh, you from fin Finkel, baby, in the house. You know it. I don't know if you remember, Jazzy, but um, I had I had my I had my first cell phone store right on the corner of Finkel and Myers, right next to that little Caesars in the in the Peach Building with with with, with love. Okay, the bar we, we, we used to barbecue outside. It, Paul, I used to be that was my first store that I had. I was in the cell phone business uh, in Detroit, right? Um, and I people didn't know it, but I lived in that store. Okay, like. Awesome. I, I used to be like uh, my car. I, I I had a raggedy car, so it didn't matter. I had an old probe that I fixed up. Remember those probe GTs? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, and it was a stick shift. I didn't even know how to drive a stick shift before I bought that car. So, but it was like, I had, I had like 10 grand. I spent half of it on that raggedy car and the other half on the, on the store. And I lived in that store. I was the first one up any, any crackhead that wanted the phone first thing in the morning, they knew where to come. Well, you're driving a probe. I want to ask how many ladies you had back then. We won't oh, go there. N none. It was none. <laughs> I was in, I was, I was in there. My, shoot, my, my, la my lady, my, if, 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 if my lady couldn't, you know, spin and make the business better, shoot, I don't need them.
Oh, da oh, Darius, you from the no number streets. Oh, man. Listen, da Darius, what do you know about 30th, baby? D injunction, okay? Your boy all been, been through there. 30th, all that. 31st, all that. Is there anybody from Detroit you don't know? That's what I want to know. Yeah, there's a lot of people from Detroit I don't know. All right, but I know, enough. but I know these areas that they're talking about though. Detroit oh, rules Ricky everything. G in the house, huh? Detroit rules everything. Oh yeah, you know, and we hustle the hardest. We hustle the hardest. Uh, so, 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 so you, sure. so you started CEO Crossings. What was the goal of starting CEO Crossings, Paul? Like, what were what 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 what, what it, what's the service? Tell me about the service. What what is it? Yeah, if sure. I come if I come to CEO Crossing, what can I buy, man? I need I want to buy yeah. some. What can I buy? Let's step back and talk about why. Uh, okay. Eric and I were very selfish with why we started CEO Crossing. I said, look, I've got a business. You got a business. We need to grow our businesses. We need to be surrounding ourselves with people who can help us grow. Um, let's build a community where we have people that can help support us, and then we can help support them and and. So we took a selfish approach in the beginning because I said, if it can help me in my business, then I know it can help you in your business. And so mm. that was very important. So right now, when you come to CEO Crossing, it's it's a membership. Uh, we've we've got uh, you you join the community, you get access to our our networking community, get access mm. to our mastermind calls. Uh, we've got training programs that that are going on constantly. We've got some amazing coaches that are part of the community. And it's just growing every day, man. It's like it's just a place where you're not alone in what you're doing. And so I think that's so. It's, so it's a membership. It is. Yeah. Okay. So so tell me about it. Like, how does it work? Yeah. So if you join, you uh, you pay a membership fee and you get access to the community. And uh, day one, you're you're provided some nice bonus programs that you get some coaching out of the the gate. How many people then, are part of the community right now? Right now it's it's small it's under 100 but okay. uh, we're just launched so this That's is awesome. kind of the infancy. and the so, nice thing because it's small but listen it's like listen a, a hundred strong can go a long way yeah. you know absolutely I mean the 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 reason that I started this channel was to build a community you know was to build that community yeah. not and, and I'll tell you what I only have three thousand subscribers on here but 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 I but 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 the, but the cake stacking up. So it's not it's not the number, it's the quality. Okay. Well it, when I had uh Bots Academy Radio, I was mm -hmm. getting ten to twenty thousand downloads a month. And I would say that the quality of the interactions I had was was not that great because there was so many people that there was no connection, there was no personal connection there. I got mm -hmm. more out of my connection with the guests. But now it's like I feel the way we're approaching this, the way we're building it, it is from the ground up we're building relationships and building trust and giving people a place where they can flourish because like i said it's not about a lack of resources anybody tells me they don't have the resources mm -hmm. no you're just not resourceful enough we can help you be more resourceful that's awesome i love it i love i love that philosophy um what's going down work to live not live to work it, it, could it be said any better especially you know uh um uh, in in it he got the logo and everything W-L-N-L-W. Oh, Beautiful. I love it. I like going on there. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah, but, you know, look, I mean, that's that's interesting that I love that work to live, not, not live to work. But when you're an entrepreneur, there's something that happens when you leave a W-2 and you start your own company. Your life revolves around your business to a point, but that's a good thing because it's not like I'm a slave to my work. I'm all I'm, what I am is I'm passionate about building something that is mm -hmm. going to help my kids, leave a legacy, but also help others. Absolutely, absolutely. That's such a it's such a blessing, and and, and it's such the perfect time to do it because there's so much out there there's so many resources available right now okay i mean if you had a business that was registered before the pandemic started do you know how much resources is available out there to you you know uh, i mean it's just it's just incredible it's just incredible this is this is the greatest the the biggest transfer of wealth in history happening right before your eyes ladies and gentlemen OK, the, 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 the government of the United States has printed more than 40 percent of all the money 
that they've ever printed in 2020. All right, ladies and gentlemen. In case you didn't know, there is no more fractional lending. Banks are free to lend regardless of what they have on their on their books. Banks have a free license to print money, just like the government is and, and is doing. That and take advantage of it now, because that it, there's no guarantee oh, that it's going to be that way. Oh no, now there's no time. no. It's almost over. It's yeah. almost over. They they want their money back, and who's going to give it back to them? Everybody else. Everybody right. else. You know, everybody else. It's you know, it, it it it's unfortunate, but that is the way it is. I'm sorry, we didn't make the game. Okay, we're just playing it. All right, talk to somebody else. All right, maybe if I made my own world, everybody would be living in the harmony and peace, but I don't know. They probably go crazy. That that was like the first version of the Matrix. Remember, Paul? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. They, remember they remember they made the first version of the Matrix and, and um one of the agents told them, "Hey, we made it perfect, but your people couldn't handle it because they need they need they need to have the, the good and the bad. They need to have the rich and the poor. They need to be able to compare cuz that's just who we are as humans." You know? You, you, you know, you don't you don't know what's good until you see the bad, you know. So and there's a lot of glitches in the Matrix, let me tell you. Oh man, listen, I could there's a, I could I I could live a whole life based on the matrix. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, let me ask you a question. I know this is your show, but I got to it's not very often I get to talk to you, right, man? So I want to ask, what's your favorite way for somebody to establish business credit today because I uh I know that I stumbled into it. I fortunately ran across some people that said, "Hey, you got good personal credit, but your business credit it doesn't even exist." So I, I didn't even know business credit was the thing, but what's your favorite way for somebody getting established in that game? I mean, listen, what I say is number one, like I've always said is build the foundation of your company first. Okay. We cannot build business credit on a crumbling foundation. So what do I mean by foundation? Register your business. There's a lot of people out here that are quote unquote in business, but they're functioning as themselves still. The whole point, yeah, sure. the whole point, Paul, of, of building a business is so that entity, that business can get funding outside of you. Okay. Without you. Okay. So when you set up that business, you just had a baby. You know what I mean? You just created an entity and that entity, after you've gone to the IRS and you've gotten your employer identification number, that's a nine digit number, just like your social security number. And then you've taken your articles of organization and your EIN letter, and you've gone to the bank and you've opened up a bank account. Now you're in business. Okay. So that's first and foremost is get the foundation straightened away. Then, Hey, start getting accounts because business credit is built by vendors that report to your business credit reports. Simple as that. It's much different than personal credit, much, much different because it, personal credit you've got the fair credit reporting act okay you've got all kinds of privacy you've got all kinds of rules and regulations centered around personal data but business it's like the wild wild west some people yeah. report some don't some people this that this that but you just have to know how to navigate and get the right accounts that are reporting to the business credit bureaus so that you can generate those scores and build that business credit up and let me tell you, you got a couple of years of tenure under your belt. You got everything established, like you said. Man, there is money available, even if you think that uh, you're disadvantaged, you're not going to get anything. No, there's there's oh, money yeah. out there. Oh, absolutely. There's places to get money. And and you you and I have talked about this. Interest free credit cards, man. What a gift that can be to somebody that's in the early stages of their business. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, absolutely. L listen, it, it, first of all, what's up, Ricky G? What's going on, baby? Um, you can, if you've just maintained yourself and have been responsible, what do I mean by that? You've been responsible and you have good personal credit. Number one, second of all, you've been smart enough to start a business and to make sure that it's maintained properly. Okay. And that everything that needs to be done on the business is done properly. 
If you just do those two things, you can be a millionaire just off of the funding that you can get. All right, simple as that. You know, that's how many resources are out there. And even stimulus or not stimulus, they're still the SBA. Absolutely. Okay. EIDL loans, man, that's they, it's, it's a great program. Yeah, I mean, and, and no, EIDL is, is, you know, a part of the stimulus, but I'm talking about even before the stimulus. The SBA yeah. has some great, great loan opportunities, okay? In addition to all of the net 30 vendor accounts that you can get in just your business name. And then, Paul, if once you use that good personal credit, Okay, and put it with that good business credit, then you got the credit fusion theory book coming out soon. You know what I mean? You know that, you know, that's my thing. You know, credit fusion, you know, you know, you, you know, you, you heard about nuclear fusion. I'm coming out with credit fusion, dude. Okay. So, um, the credit fusion theory, that's what, that's what it's all about. It's using that personal credit to seed that business credit and get that, get that cake. Absolutely. Hey, Bobby, you know, so one of the things I want to, if you don't mind, I want to leave the audience with something and it's not necessarily credit related, but I think this applies to everybody listening to this. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are taking action and, and making things happen, but I, I have a program I built called action over analysis. And the idea there is we sometimes mm. let paralysis analysis, mm. you know, analysis paralysis hold us back. We start thinking our way to, to prosperity and it don't work. Oh, you got to yeah. take action got to move so one of the things in this program that i really focus on is as I, I focus on every day i want to at least get three key goal wins and i say key goals are those things that there must there must that need to be done today and i'm not talking about getting milk i'm not talking about checking your mail i'm talking about three musts that move the needle towards your goals every day and it can be small items but if you have three goals every day that you you hit every single day Man, you can fall down forward and you're still going to reach that finish line. I saw this video one time where this woman was running a marathon and she got mm -hmm. close to the end. She fell. She's about 60 feet from the finish line. She picks up. She falls again. And people are out trying to pick her up and she's waving them off. She wants to do it herself. Mm -hmm. And her ankle is giving out, man. She's just like a wreck. And so finally she lets somebody help her. But every step she takes, you can just see her body is failing. Mm -hmm. But she kept falling down, picking herself up, falling down, picking herself up. She, she crossed the finish line. And that's a perfect analogy for when things are not going well in your business. Always be moving forward, take action. And, you know, in terms of your business credit, every day, go out and do one thing that moves the needle towards you getting more funding. But if you have more than three key goals, it's just too much to manage. That's why to-do lists are, you know, you're still going to have to-do items. But those three key goals, if you get those done every day, you have guaranteed wins that are moving you closer to the finish line I, th so. I mean i think that's so powerful you know i think that's so powerful and it's so and, and you explained it so well that you don't have to have that long list just three no. goals a day that you achieve let's let's can we try that ladies and gentlemen three goals that we do every day and and just like Paul said, even if you fall, you're gonna fall forward. You know what I mean? Let me fall. Don't fall on your face, but just fall forward. Try to you know protect yourself a little bit. You know, but fall forward at least. Falling on your face ain't all bad either. You oh, might Lord, be a little scarred. I'm, I'm too pretty for that. So, you know. Well, you are, but you know some of that. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. too, I don't mm -hmm. bought too many you know uh, oil of Olay creams and shit to fall on my face. But, uh, but look, I, I know what you mean, though. <laughs> if, if, if anybody's interested, go out to ceocrossing.com forward slash key goals. There's a link to a webinar out there. There's no opt in. You just click on it. It'll ask you to put in your information just to be able to get access. But watch the webinar. It's, there's no sales pitch on it. it is really meant to just give you some ideas to help you take action. Because, I mean, that's part of what we do at CEO Crossing is, man, we want to help you move the needle. Because... You and I both like cars, and yes. car still doesn't do any good, right? You want that needle moving, and, absolutely. Uh, and and don't and don't don't do like I used to do. I used to go um I used to go get like a hundred thousand dollar car, and then after that, just try to hustle for the gas money. <laughs> um, and thanks, Darius, man. That's awesome. Appreciate hearing that.
Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Dar Darius shouting, y'all. He said, um, you couldn't have said it better than you did. It's all about creating that legacy. Absolutely, Darius. Absolutely. We've got some more. Um, it, just real quick, we're coming. Uh, we're coming. We're coming at the. How did they? How do they say it, Paul? I mean, in my radio voice, we are coming at the bottom. Is it the bottom of the hour? Or is that what it is? That's what it's called. It's. I guess it's the bottom of the hour. But how's it already that time, man? Because because by. that's what happens. That's what happens. So so we're com we're coming across the bottom of the hour. We've been on approximately an hour. You know how we do over here. If you guys have any questions, now is the time to put them in the comments. Um, once again, the the stream it will be up on the channel. Make sure you guys like. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I want you guys to go to ceocrossings.com. Okay. No S. CEOcrossing.com. CEOcrossing.com. No the link is in the yeah. description. Okay. And then also, if you want to book a call with Paul, you you, you go to uh, um, bookwithpaul.com. Uh, bookwithpaul.com. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, it, it, what, 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 are the, what are the final thoughts that we can gather from today's episode? Is there any final thoughts that we would like to leave the public with to bless them with what they're going to do tomorrow or what? Man, you got to just be moving. Uh, the world doesn't, uh, doesn't want you to succeed. The world needs you to succeed. And so it's like that's not going to happen if you don't just pick up and start moving. And that's why we have our community. If CEOcrossing.com isn't for you, that's, that's fine. But find someone to support you on the way because it is a lonely game sometimes when things aren't going well. When Hey, when it's easy, it's always easy. But when it's hard, you don't want to quit because we need you to succeed. So keep grinding. Absolutely. What a very, very wise words. Um, and it, it, you know, you, you know what I always say, just do it. You know, I, I did listen. Did Nike have that before? Did I see, I feel like I've like said stuff and then saw, you know, all of a sudden you see it on TV. So. Have that, has that ever happened to you, Paul? I think so. I think you need to wage a lawsuit today. <laughs> I think I'm going to, let me contact one of my thousand attorneys. So that's one way to get to that 10 figure mark. Absolutely. Well, yeah, hey, <laughs> I hey. feel you. And depending on where you put the decimal point, you can get to the 10 figure mark a lot quicker. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So I want to, Paul, I want to thank you um, for being yeah. a part of the stream tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure and um, we will definitely uh, be having you on again in the future. Uh, Amazing. You know, yeah. And um, I want to touch bases with you again to see how the community is developing uh and i know that we did an uh an interview a few days ago um that's going to be um you know uh shown to the community so yeah i i mean you know once again thank you and uh you know peace and love baby hey man it's been an honor bobby we really appreciate all you're doing here at cakeology too so it's like it's amazing the uh the stuff you're doing to help people transform their lives so thank you I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And uh, you guys, I will see you guys next Tuesday for another live stream. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. If you have questions or comments, always leave them in the in the in the comments section of any video. I might just make a video about it. All right. So I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Until then. Peace and love, baby.